In this video, we're gonna show the premium flame sensor from Emerson White Rogers that's universal for many, many different applications. Thing comes with a three-year warranty. You can bend it, you can cut it for different applications. It's really a great universal flame sensor. This flame sensor can work with boilers, furnaces, and water heaters, and it's designed for 150 different OEM applications, but really, you can kind of make it work for almost anything you want it to be. The Emerson White Rogers Premium Flame Sensor is a versatile flame sensor that can work in many different appliances. It comes with a wire, a bending sleeve, and a high temperature rod that withstands temperatures up to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. This means you can adjust it to work for a wide range of boilers, water heaters, furnaces, cooking appliances, and other applications. This is a universal flame sensor that replaces over 150 different common parts. So let's take a closer look. A flame sensor is often also called a flame rod or a flame rectifier. And a lot of people believe there's something specific about the rod or the metal in the rod that generates a current. That's a common belief because the old thermocouples and thermopiles work that way. But a flame rod conducts a very small DC current to ground through the flame. So as the flame passes over the rod, we get some electrical potential fed from the board and that potential is then allowed to move from the rod to ground. The reason it's called a rectifier is because it's a DC current due to the difference in size between the rod and the large burner assembly. And so it changes the alternating current to a direct current. The board is looking for that specific signal and we can measure it in the microamp scale by wiring in our meter in series with the rod itself. That's the only way to properly measure it. You disconnect the rod, wire it in series, and measure it in microamps, which represents millions of an amp. That's a tiny, tiny current conducted to ground, and that's why it's so important that these are kept clean. Dirty or damaged rods should be replaced with clean rods like this one. One of the downsides to cleaning a rod is that you often leave small scuff marks, which can cause the rod to attract more of the particles that got them dirty in the first place. So if you find a rod that's getting dirty a lot, you should look at the quality of the flame do a combustion analysis, and make sure there are no chemicals in the space that are mixing with the combustion air and causing that premature fouling. When we open this box, we immediately see the installation instructions. At the top, you can see it's item number 790-843A1. The flame sensor comes protected. Whenever you're working with these, it's not recommended to touch the flame rod itself with your fingers. The oils on your skin can get onto it quite easily. Though you can clean the rod with a microfiber lens cleaning cloth like this one, you just want to take care not to damage the ceramic. Again, on the rod itself, it's not the biggest deal to touch it with your hands, but it's a good practice to get used to not doing so because you definitely don't want to touch an igniter. The instructions come with tables showing you how you can modify the flame sensor for a variety of applications. The colors of the chart tell you which adjustment you need to make. You don't need to adjust anything on the green chart. The blue chart requires you just to bend the rod and the red chart requires that you cut the rod. The yellow chart contains applications that require both cutting and bending. You'll receive specific instructions on how to do each of those. On the other side, you can see how to brace the rod against the edge of a surface. Below that, the instructions show you the degree of bending. Obviously, you're not going to bend it beyond 90 degrees, but the flange position matters when you go to bend the rod, so you'll want to compare it to the old rod before you begin bending it, and then again make sure that it's the same after you bend it. You can bend it by hand as shown here, but many of you will find it easier to use pliers or channel locks. Just make sure you grab onto the bending sleeve and not the rod itself. It's nice that this comes with a screw and a bending sleeve, but it also has a 3 16 terminal in addition to the standard quarter inch terminals. So the sensor works for a quarter inch terminal, but can also work if you have a smaller termination on the board. You just cut the old terminal off, strip the wire back and use a proper crimping tool to replace the terminal. As you can see here, we have the flame rod, the ceramic insulator, and a standard quarter inch terminal. Again, be careful not to damage the ceramic part. Handle with care. I'm gonna show you how to bend the rod. Let's say we need to bend it 45 degrees facing up, which is a common way to bend this rod. You would hold the rod so that the flange is pointing upwards. Slide the bending sleeve on the rod until it goes all the way to the end. And that's where you're gonna do your bending. With the flange facing up here and the sleeve rolled over the rod, apply pressure to the sleeve portion of the rod as I do here. You can also use pliers to do this. Just take care to only grab on the sleeve. This shows a basic 45 degree bend. Let's say you wanna bend 90 degrees. We follow the same steps as before and apply pressure to the rod. And there's your 90 degree bend. And we can confirm it by comparing it to the old rod. 
As mentioned, it's also very easy to cut. This flame sensor is super easy to adjust and use. It comes with a three-year limited warranty and works very well when paired with the Emerson White Rogers Hot Rod Universal Igniters. For more information about these flame sensors, please visit emerson.com slash White Rogers or the White Rogers mobile app. You can also go to hvacrschool.com slash flame sensor for more information. The item number is 790-843-A1 if you want to look it up and order it from a quality wholesale distributor near you. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to hvacrschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.